everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Internet Computer Developer Journey. In today's episode, we're going to be starting level two of the Internet Computer Developer Journey. In level two, we're going to talk a lot about some of the more advanced canister operations that we can do. In today's episode, we're going to start out with canister upgrades, storage, and data persistence. And then in the following episodes in level two space explorer, we're going to talk about advanced canister calls using third party canisters, get an introduction to Candid and its role that it plays in the ICP environment. And then we're also going to talk about unit integration and end to end testing before wrapping up the level with Matoko level two. So in today's episode, we're going to be focused on canister upgrades, data storage, and data persistence. And when we talk about data storage on the internet computer, there are quite a few different terms that you're going to come across that indicate different types of storage and how different forms of memory are allocated. So to get started, we're going to review the memory types and terms that we're going to be using when talking about canister storage. The first is stable memory. So stable memory refers to the internet computer's long-term data storage feature. This is not language specific. It can be utilized by any canisters that are written in any language and stable memory currently can hold up to 400 gigabytes if the subnet can accommodate that. Next, we have heap storage or heap memory, and this refers to the regular WASM memory data store for each canister. This is temporary storage, so it, it can be considered an equivalent of random access memory or RAM in your traditional desktop or laptop computer, whereas stable memory can be equated to the hard drive on that laptop or desktop computer. So heap memory is only temporary. It's not persisted across canister upgrades and data that's stored in heat memory is removed whenever the canister is upgraded or reinstalled. Heat memory is limited to only four gigabytes. And so the primary difference between stable memory and heat memory is that stable memory will persist across upgrades. So whenever a canister is upgraded, started, or stopped, whatever is stored in stable memory is going to remain, whereas whatever is stored in the heap memory is going to be removed each time there is a upgrade or if the canister is started and stopped. In addition to these two terms, we also have two Motoko specific terms, stable storage and stable variables. So stable storage is specifically referring to the Motoko stable storage feature, which on the back end uses the ICP stable memory. So it's Motoko's way of utilizing that stable memory feature. And as part of that stable storage feature, Motoko uses stable variables, and these refer to variables defined in Motoko that use the stable modifier, and that indicates that the value of the variable should be persisted across canister upgrades. So the primary way that we can visualize and see stable memory in action is through upgrading canisters. So when a canister has been deployed and it's running on the mainnet, there may need to be changes made to the canister's code over time to fix bugs or introduce new features. To make these changes, the canister must be upgraded. Upgrading a canister allows the smart contracts to persist using WASM memory that uses the stable memory feature and allows the existing state of the canister to be preserved while changes are made to the canister's code. And so in the docs here, we give an overview of the Matoko stable memory workflow and the Rust stable memory workflow. The primary takeaway from these is that the canister is going to need to be stopped before it can be upgraded. And then any information stored in the heaps memory is going to be discarded and new heap memory is going to be initialized using the new version of the canister's WASM module and stable memory is going to pres be preserved and made available to the new WASM module. And then the new code is going to be installed using a flag called mode upgrade, which we are going to see in action later in this video. And then the canister is going to be started. It's going to be running the new code. It's going to be using the new WASM memory, and then it's going to be using the same stable memory. Um, and so you can read more about each of these in the documentation in the developer journey 2.1 um, canister upgrade storage and persistence. 
So for this video though, we are going to jump right into the interactive example where we're going to be coding a simple canister that utilizes stable memory. But first, since we're going to be using Matoko for writing this canister, we are going to just reiterate the stable storage and stable variables and their definitions. So recall that I mentioned Matoko uses a specific feature known as stable storage, which uses stable memory on the back end. And in order to utilize stable storage, you need to use stable variables. And these are defined within a Matoko actor using the stable keyword. If that stable keyword isn't used, the variable is going to be defined as flexible by default, which means that it's not going to persist across canister upgrades. So to get into our example, first we are going to open up a new terminal window, and then we're also going to be writing some code. So I'm also going to have my Visual Studio code open as well. And so in the terminal window here, I am first going to navigate into my developer journey directory, since this is where I like to keep all of my projects for the developer journey, and it's been recommended in the environment setup module to use a similar workflow as well. But navigate into whatever directory you would like to store your project files. And then if you haven't already started DFX, use DFX start. I'm going to use the clean flag to remove any temporary files that are left over from previous DFX versions that I've been running. And then I'm also going to use the background flag to tell the output of DFX to be logged in the background so I can keep using this terminal window. And for me, I can see that the FX is currently already running, but if you don't have it running, be sure to run that command. And then we're going to create a new project called the FX new, and we're going to call this counter since we are going to be creating a simple counter canister that is going to store a counter variable that we are going to see the value of persisted across canister upgrades. So, We'll go ahead and run that command and have DFX create us a new project. And so we see that that is created. So then we're going to navigate into that new directory by using the cd counter command. And then we can just print our working directory and see that we are in the developer journey counter directory. So now we want to open up the default backend canister file that was created with DFX. So we're going to open up Visual Studio. I'm going to go to File, Open, and I'm going to find my Developer Journey folder and then my Counter folder. And I'm just going to open this entire folder so we have the entire project opened in the Explorer window here. And I'm going to navigate into the source or the SRC file or folder. And I'm going to go into counter back end and open this main.mo file. And so I'm going to then close Explorer for now, just so we've got a little bit more room here. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger as well. Okay, so we can see that by default, we have the hello world um, definition here. And we want to remove all of that since we aren't going to be using it. So in this, we're going to define an actor that is called counter, and that is going to include a, sta a stable variable that preserves the counter's values across um, the canister's upgrades. So to do that, we're going to use actor, we're going to call it counter, and then we're going to need some curly brackets and press enter. Then we're going to define our stable variable by using stable var value equals. We're going to start off at zero. Then we're going to create a public function and we're going to call it inc or inc and we're going to we're going to define it as accepting a nat value as input. Then we are going to have our stable variable called value and we're going to increment it by one and then we're going to return that value. And we're going to need a semicolon after the um, first curly bracket here, but we don't need one after the second curly bracket. And then we're going to command S to save this file. Then we can navigate back into our terminal window and we can DFX deploy. And we just want to deploy that backend canister. Um, we aren't going to worry about the default front end canister in this project. 
So we're just going to deploy that backend canister and we're just deploying locally for our local testing. We won't deploy to the mainnet in this tutorial. And so now we can see that it's been deployed and we can open the candid UI URL. And we can see that we just have this inc function to increment our stable variable called value. And now we're going to call this and it is just going to increment it by one. So first it's just going to be one and we can call it a couple times. See that now it returns two increment and see now it returns three. So now we have the value of three stored in this stable variable called value. So now we want to upgrade this canister and make sure that value of three stays where it is. Um, we don't want that to be reset to its original value of zero and it shouldn't since we have it defined as a stable variable. So it should hold that value of three once we stop the canister, upgrade it and then restart it. So to do that, we're going to use DFX canister stop, counter back end, oh, back end, not background. And now that it's stopped, we're going to go into our code and we're going to change this value. So instead of incrementing it by one each time that we call the function, we're going to increment it by three. So we're going to save this and then we're going to go back to our command line and we're going to now upgrade the canister with that new code since the code has been changed. And we're going to do dfx canister install counter backend and then we need to use the mode upgrade flag. And it says that module hash has already been installed. And let's see, I did modify this file. We'll just make sure we have file save. Let's go ahead and just run that again. Okay. And so now we want to restart by using dfx canister start counter backend. And then deploy the canister with the FX deploy counter backend. So now we can see that it did get upgraded since in the output here, when it was building and installing, it says upgrading code for canister back for canister counter backend with canister ID deployed canister. So now if we open this candid UI again, so we can close this one and reopen it here. Now, if we call this increment, it should increment the value by three. And remember that it should also be containing the value three. So our output here should be six. So let's see if that works. And yep, our value is now six. So it took our original value stored in stable variable of value it was previously three, and then we modified the code, made it so now it gets incremented by three. So three plus three is six. And so now if we call that again, we can see that it'll increment it by three again and return nine. And so that is a very basic example of how to use stable variables and how stable variables can be utilized across canister upgrades and that's a great visualization of how values can be persisted across canister upgrades. Be sure to like and subscribe to the Definity YouTube channel to stay up to date with the ICP developer journey. In the next episode, we'll be talking about advanced canister calls, so things such as composite queries. And be sure to reach out on the ICP developer forum or in the developer discord server if you have any questions or run into any bugs or problems when you are on your ICP developer journey. We'll see you in the next episode. Take care.